Today is February 11, 2018. Our sermon topic today is God's Day. This week, our church not only created the day called God's Day in a celebration for God on the first day of the year, uh, we celebrate God's Day versus Godless Day. And I thought we'd try to make it clear why should we celebrate God's Day? What's up with that? Let's, uh, let's hear. So, God's Day versus Godless Day. And uh, I thought I'd make sure you understand the difference between those who celebrate God's Day versus those who celebrate Godless Day. By the way, there's many people who celebrate Godless Day, right? Every doggone day. Uh, this is from the wh Where's My Context From? Divine Principle in the section on time identity, the 400 years preparation for the coming of the Lord of the Second Advent, and Reverend Moon's speech or sermon to America called God's Hope for America. And ideally, this makes sense to you. I try, of course, I always try to do a lot of research. So you can see it's not just some wild idea. There's real history and understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. So I thought with, I'd begin with the godless side. You guys may have heard of Samuel Benjamin Harris, uh, an American author, philosopher, neuroscientist, blogger, and podcast host. He is a critic of religion. He's not a critic. He actually hates religion. Uh, and Christianity, and proponent of the liberty to criticize religion, which he does every single day of the year. He is concerned with matters that touch on spirit spirituality, morality, neuroscience, free will, and terrorism. He hates terrorism, and he also hates morality. Anyway, I'll, sh I'll give you an example of his idea of morality, right? He is described as one of the four horsemen of the new atheism. Who are the four horsemen? There's originally four horsemen of the apocalypse. One is death and one's disease, etc. He's one of them. <coughs> Anyhow, this is, there he is right now. Okay. Okay. Questions of good and evil, right and wrong, are commonly thought unanswerable by science, but Sam Harris argues that science can and should be an authority on moral issues. Science should be the authority on moral issues, not those crazy, zany religious people, and especially not Christians or Jews. Should be a, an authority on moral issues, shaping human values, and setting out what constitutes a good life. Here, I'll give you an example. Here he says, if I could wave a magic wand and get rid of either rape or religion, I would not hesitate to get rid of religion. Clear, clearly, moral authority in the world, right? I'd rather women get raped than go to church. <laughs> Clear science of a, a, a really good person. Anyway, I really am, anyhow. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to let you hear from his words. This is a very special issue. This is a special issue to us. One of the main functions of Family Federation for World Peace is that all human beings are part of a human family. All human beings deserve respect and uh, should be appreciated. And all human beings are in a fallen state and we need to raise them up. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you his words on matters of race and intelligence. So let's exit this. Let's go here. And let's go, sorry, I can't see without these. Let's go here. OK. He's going to talk about inte human intelligence. OK, so he, I'm just going to show you some of the pictures. Number one, you see this. This is a, probably a Jewish guy, right? He's wearing the yarmulke. yarmulke. Anyway, let's, you'll see the pictures. And we'll just, I'm just going to run about three minutes of this. Because that's all I could take before I start screaming. <laughs> Black guy, sort of a confused white guy there. Who, who is he? Hindu guy, Indian, with a snake. If you believe in different genetic ancestors, childbearing patterns, evolution, among other factors in group development, why do we persist in the notion that all groups, on average, are the same when it comes to intelligence? It makes See? no logical sense that groups can evolve to be completely different in terms of physical externalities, but be completely the same on average when it comes to the brain. And it is not backed up by any statistics that all groups, on average, are the same. However, the impact of intelligence also varies within groups to such a degree that we cannot treat individuals differently based on appearance, at least on a personal level. These are topics that are so 
politically incorrect, despite being never disproven, that I never expected to bring them up, simply because anyone who brings them up is accused with various slander and insults. Yet Sam Harris, one of the most rational voices on the center left, rational in voices on the left, conversation with IQ research Charles Murray confirms that these are facts. And this is Facts. coming from Sam Harris. You're stupider than he is. Has always been very skeptical of these claims. And there was a time when being a few standard deviations above the mean in intelligence didn't get you very much when you're just plowing the field alongside your neighbors. But now you can start a software company or a hedge fund. And this leads to astonishing levels of wealth inequality and cultural isolation. This is a theme that Murray has returned to in his other work and in a more recent book, Coming Apart, which we also discussed. Now, unfortunately for Murray, what we have here is a set of nested taboos. That's Human right. Intelligence itself is a taboo topic. People That's don't want right. to hear that intelligence is a real thing, and that some people have more of it than others. Some people have more of it. Who could that be? Really measure it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that differences in IQ matter, because they're highly predictive of differential success in life. And not just for things like educational attainment and wealth, but for things like out of wedlock birth and mortality. Mm. People don't want to hear that a person's intelligence is in large measure due to his or her genes. And there seems to be a we can do environmentally to increase a person's intelligence, even in childhood. It's not that the environment doesn't matter, but genes appear to be 50 to 80% of the story. People don't want to hear this. And they certainly don't want to hear that average IQ differs across races and ethnic groups. Now, for better or worse, these are all facts. You know, I'm going to stop there. Because here's what he's saying. I'll show you what he's saying. And then, ideally, you realize that we've heard all, we've heard all these things before, by the way. Okay. So let's go back to this. Let's go back to the second line. Here's his line. If you want to go hear the whole thing, after he says this, here's what he's saying. He's saying people don't want to hear that if you're dark-skinned or you have brown skin or you're Asian or you're Hindu or you're a Jew, then you're stupider than white people like Sam Harris. Then after he's going he's to say no, uh, yeah, uh, but I'm not judging you individually. It's just your race who is less intelligent than I am. right? So personally... Uh, this really hurts me a lot, uh, I'll tell you, for several reasons. And one, we're, our church believes that God made everybody and that the differences between human beings are really slight and that the, uh, and that the idea that one race is superior, like German, right? We've heard this before, the mass, whole master race uh, thing, the whole uh, British colonial idea that we're better than you, therefore we can enslave you, uh, the slave master idea. And by the way, all my life I heard, because I have brown skin, well, then I must be less intelligent than the other carpenters or the other uh, engineers on the job or the other people in college or something. I heard that all my life, right? And it's a horrible, evil thing to be made a second-class citizen because of the color of your skin. Now, the point is I want you to make that they think that this is science, that, that Sam Harris is a white racist, arrogant snob who thinks that he's teaching science if he teaches that white people are smarter than black people, for example, or brown people, or Native American people, or Hindu people. He's just automatically smarter and better than they are. And sorry, that's not racism. That's just the facts, right? That's what he says again. It's just scientific facts. He said, what do they say? If you believe in genetic differences and evolution, why do you think we are all the same when it comes to intelligence? He says, no, it can't be. Some people are tall, some people are short. Some groups just aren't capable of being intelligent. He says it makes no logical sense that groups can evolve with difference in externalities like skin color, height, weight, but mostly he means skin color, right? People don't want to hear that his or her intelligence is based on his or her genes. Now, I'm going to go through a lot of points that, <laughs> that no, it doesn't make any difference, your genes. Asian people are as smart as white people. Uh, anyway, I'll go through the actual evidence. It seems, and here's a really important point, it seems that there is very little we can do to increase a person's intelligence. 100% incorrect. We know. Family, love, 
teaching, education, food, nutrition, all those things change a person's intelligence. Everything does. How quickly they read, do the parents read to them when they're little kids, all those things, you know, absolutely affects a person's intelligence. So why would, anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I say Sam Harris is a racist snob, right? What he means is we are all animals and some animals are smarter than other animals and there is nothing that you can do about it. Average IQ difference, difference, difference across races. Actually, if, if we simply understand Mendelian genetics, there's no races. <laughs> Actually, there's no races. We have different colored people, but we're all exactly the same people. We all have two eyes, all breathe oxygen, all have the same livers, all have interchangeable organs, right? We can do organ transplants from a black guy to a white guy, or a white guy to a Jewish guy. It doesn't make any difference. It's all the same organs, right? It doesn't make any difference at all. Anyhow, Sam Harris is an arrogant atheist racist. This is a new face of atheism and racism called center left. And the reason I'm making these points is you have to understand, especially our young people, especially y our young people, you're going to face the so-called center left racism that says they're smarter than you and there's nothing you can do about it. And p personally, that makes me really upset and angry because you know why? It doesn't matter for me. I'm successful. I've been tremendously successful in my life. They're going to hurt our kids. They want to hurt our kids. And I think that's really evil, right? Black and brown and yellow human animals are simply not that intelligent. It's, a, it's genetic. We cannot change a person's genes. Only white human animals have evolved with superior intelligence. And he says these are all just plain facts and there's no use arguing them. They're just facts and you can't change science, right? Sam Harris isn't a new thinker, by the way. This isn't new thought. You know, he says, uh, you know what, sometimes if you say these things, people call you names. You know why? Because Adolf Hitler killed 12 million people in concentration camps because he thought that they were less, they were inferior race to his race, right? So that's all been said before. Again, if we just look at the biology of Gregor Mendel, we're all one species. We're all interchangeable. We're, uh, and we all do all things the same. We have the same brain size, same brain. It doesn't, it's, it's not different, right? Depending on the culture, people do well or don't do well regardless of their DNA. And I'll show you pure, perfect examples of this that people can be able to understand, right? All the old racist ideas about race and intelligence are wrong. They belong back in the 17th and 19th century where they belong. And I'll show you why. For example, here's two countries, right? Two groups of people. West Germans, East Germans. Two nations with the exact same genetic code. They're both Germans, right? They both have the same language, same history, same background, uh, same everything, right? Uh, uh, in the East, communist, atheist country that per persecuted Christianity and were themselves impoverished. During the Cold War, when this remained a, a Soviet country with uh, ideals of atheism and materialism, they were poor. They were almost to the point of starvation, whereas on the, so on the West, the West, Germans and Christian democracy, West Germany, one of the richest nations in the whole world. One of the richest nations in the whole world, one of the leaders in world manufacturing, technology, science, and social conditions, right? This country and this country are, have exactly the same DNA. They're both, all Germans. Fa same family, same family name, same history, same language, same book, same everything. But this group is poor and this group is rich. This group is giving us science, new medical breakthroughs, new all kinds of new technology, new machines. This nation, uh, the same uh, genetic people, offer us nothing. You would never buy an East German car, right? Or an East German radio, or East German anything, right? Has nothing to do, the intelligence or success of this group has nothing to do with race or DNA. They're identical. And one race is rich, and one group is, is poor. Right? This was a study in 1960. The main thoroughfares of West Berlin are near jam with prosperous looking automobile traffic. The German make of cars, big and small, being much in events, buses and trains dominate the thoroughfares of East Berlin. Other automobiles, generally old and small cars, are in much smaller numbers than in West Berlin. So they don't even have cars in East Germany. Right? They don't even have cars. One notices cars parked in front of workers' quarters in West Berlin. The new phenomenon of workers owning cars, which West Berlin shares with the USA and many parts of Europe, is unknown in East Berlin. In contrast with one sees in the West Berlin, the buildings are 
here generally gray from neglect, the furnishings lack in brightness and quality, and the roads and pavements are shabby. So it is in our cities by the say. By the way, in 1960, the bomb damage was still not repaired in the East. I just didn't have time to write everything. He says, everyone tried to afford a Trabant East German car during the East German times. You have to have yourself put on a list and you had to wait for a car between 11 and 15 years to actually get a car in East Germany, right? Here, and here's my point. Okay, East Germans are part of the so-called superior white race, right? In Nigeria, do Nigerians have trouble buying cars? In Africa, in black Africa, do they have to wait 15 years to get a car? No. So we could say Nigerians or many groups in, in Africa, in, in Argentina or Venezuela, they had none of these problems, yeah. right? So, so who's smarter? See, it has nothing to do with genetics. It has to do with the culture and government you're living under at the time. And that, how about this country? Two nations with the exact same genetic code. North Korea suffers poverty, even famines, where millions starve to death. They're still starving to death. Here's South Korea, right? South Christian democracy Korea is the Asian miracle. 50 million South Koreans from the seventh richest country in the world. They're competing with China, with Japan, with Germany, with England. They, they do far better than England does, by the way. So who's, which race is smarter, the Koreans or the British? It really doesn't make any difference. It's the government. It's the government, right? It's not genetics. It's culture and ideology. And look at this. Uh, Seoul is uh, full of light and wealth and the exact same genetic code. North Koreans, same language, same history, same genetic code, same name, same everything. These guys are in famine and starving to death, right? Does it make it? What's the difference in genetic? There's no difference. Has nothing, success or social prosperity has nothing to do with your uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, your DNA. It has nothing to do with your race. It has 100% to do with culture. Okay. National Geographic, a view from space, for instance, revealed that North Koreans have experienced a continuous lack of steady electric light across the country at night over the past few years. Other glimpses have shown a crippling famine that lasts for decades, for decades, leading to around 3 million deaths and continued legacy of starvation. This is 5% of the population, 3 million, right? There's only 20 million North Koreans, and now there's only 17 million. Persecution of Christians and Buddhists, according to the Christian Open Doors Organization, North Korea is a leader among countries who persecute Christians. <coughs> Christian Solidarity Worldwide say there are numerous reports of people being sent to prison camps and subjected to torture and human treatment because of the faith. It is estimated that 50,000 to 70,000 Christians are held in North Korean prison camps. There are reports of public executions of Christians. Now let me show how this, this culture, one of the reasons this culture is so poor, so backward, so lacking in technology, is one of the reasons is persecution of Christians. And I'll give you my evidence. This idea of, of evolution or Darwinistic, materialistic, atheistic theology uh, as a state religion has been tried over and over again, always resulting in agony and suffering. I showed East Germany and North Korea. I could show Vietnam. I could show China. I could show uh, Dutch Cuba, Venezuela, all the other companies that are undergoing this type of uh, culture of atheistic materialism always turns to agony, misery, and suffering. The materialist view of the superiority of race has been going on for centuries. It has resulted in slavery, murder, colonialism, poverty, war, forced sterilization, euthanasia, eugenic cleansing of the race, and genocide. Thank you, Sam Harris, for continuing the happy thoughts of white racism. Right? I mean, look, just look at the evidence. And especially for you kids going to college, you're going to hear secular uh, humanism and Darwinism and Christianity is no good and Christians are stupid and all this, you're going to hear all these things. I'm trying to cure you before they poison your mind, right? Of course, since he's Sam Harris's white, he counts himself as part, of course, the superior race, right? So here's the, tr here, here's the question. Is it true? Does science disprove Christianity? This is one of the things, big things Sam Harris says and the other three horsemen of the apocalypse. Let's look at the evidence. Or rather, let's look at how real scientists look at the evidence. So let's look and see. Does Christianity hate science and not do well in science, or is it the opposite way around? It's the opposite way around. Do you know who this guy is? Anybody remember him? Any Canadians remember him? 
He's only the greatest, he's only described as the greatest living Canadian. Neurosurgeon Wilder Penfield would have been 120 years old on January 26. He's no longer a living Canadian. But he's the one who mapped the brain. He was a neurosurgeon. Sam Harris is a neurosurgeon. This guy is a neurosurgeon. If you matched Wilder, uh, his, here's his name, Wilder Penfield's accomplishments in overcoming uh, uh, epilepsy and things like that, Wilder Penfield's a genius like this. What are the accomplishments of Sam Harris in the scientific realm? There aren't any. You can look up Wikipedia, look up Scientific American. What are his great There aren't any. There's nothing. He has a PhD in neuroscience and stopped so he could be a philosopher and say how much he hates religion. <laughs> Penfield is recognized for his advances in mapping the brain for a groundbreaking epilepsy treatment known as the Montreal Procedure. Right? So these maps are still used today, practically unaltered. His understanding of the human brain, mapping of the human brain, still the same. No one, no one got smarter than him and did things a better way. This is his story, right? Now, here he is, one of the greatest neurosurgeons ever. Incredible accomplishments in saving people's lives. His story. He says this. He was on a naval vessel during World War I. Suddenly, I was aware of a prodigious sound and knew that I was moving through space. Objects moved with me, turning slowly over and over. Curiously enough, though, I realized that I was at the very center of an explosion. My mind seemed crystal clear. We had hit a floating mine, I thought, or else a German torpedo. I must eventually fall into the sea, and this wreckage will come drifting down on top of me. This is the end of my life, and all the while there was that dreadful din in my ears, and time stood still. So he's on a ship, it blows up, he's flying through the air thinking all these thoughts, right? Then it was... Then it was that my own personal belief seemed to speak out in words within me. No, this cannot be the end. The work that I have planned to do is good and has only just begun, right? He planned to be a neurosurgeon. During that moment of time, I seemed to see my own life as though in distant perspective. I was sure then that God controlled all things and that healing and research was the job he had given me. It was as simple as that, right? Logic or no logic, the experience showed me what I believed. There is a great purpose, a great spirit that moves in the universe. And we as individuals in this world have each of us a certain sphere of free will. We may seek to play a role that is in accord with the will of God, or we may turn our lives to sabotage. We have it in our power to help or to hinder. There is a job for every man, and his contribution, though infinitesimal, is nonetheless important. I am astonished. This is Wilder Pender, greatest scientist produced by, and they produce the guys who, who resolve insulin and say, so he's con I am astonished to discover how many people seem to believe that there is a basic contradiction between science and religion. This, it seems to me, is a false conclusion derived from two misconceptions. First, a misunderstanding of what science can achieve, and second, a narrowness of interpretation of the meaning of religion. So here you have two great neurosurgeons, right? One is greater than the other. One is smarter than the other. One is more successful. One has saved lives. The other one has done nothing with his degree except how much he hates religion. Who are you going to trust? Who are you going to trust? I trust Wilfred Penfield. Here's another great neurosurgeon. Here's another neurosurgeon that you can compare to Sam Harris. Uh, his, uh, John, Sir John Eccles was an Australian neurophysiologist who won the 1963 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his work on the synapse. He's figuring out how the brain actually works. You know, you hear about synapses in your brain. He's the one who discovered it, right? Him. He says, I have come to the conclusion that neuroscience provides no evidence whatsoever that the mind is identical with its brain. I am convinced that those who believe that it does provide such evidence bring their naturalist convictions to the evidence. In other words, they are already naturalist materialists before they do their neuroscience. So here's a Nobel Prize winning neurosurgeon. What does he say about God and science? He says, we come to exist through a divine act. That divine guidance is a theme throughout our life. At our death, the brain goes, but that divine guidance and love continues. Each of us is a unique, conscious being, a divine creation. It is a religious view. It is the only view consistent with all the evidence. So here's another neuroscientist, except he's a Nobel Prize winning scientist. It means he's at the top of the top, the apex of science. He finds no contradiction between science and religion, right? Only only mediocre, lesser neurosurgeons who know nothing about actually working to save human lives. Who knows more about neuroscience? Sam Harris, or Nobel Prize winning scientist, founder of modern neuroscience, or John Eccles, Sir John Eccles? 
or neuroscientist Wilder Penfield? Who knows more about science, Sam Harris, or how about this guy? At age 33, the youngest physician to ever head a major division, John Hopkins. John Hopkins is the anti-cancer research laboratory, right? This guy, whoever he is, 33 years old, is the head of it, right? Two, named by CNN and Time Magazine as one of the nation's 20 foremost physicians and scientists in 2001. Elected by the Library of Congress as one of the 89 living legends. 89 living legends on the occasion of its 200th anniversary in 2001. Elected to the National Academy of Science Institute of Medicine, considered one of the highest honors in the fields of health and medicine. Who knows more, this guy or Sam Harris? Majored in psychology at Yale and graduated from the University of Michigan School of Medicine. Received the nation's highest civilian award, the Presidential Medal of Freedom 2008. The medal may be awarded by the president to any person who has made an especially meritorious contribution to the security or national interests of the United States or world peace or cultural or other significant public or private endeavors. You know who this guy is? Anybody figure it out? Dr. Ben Carson, right? An atheist called Ben Carson a moron for believing in God. Here's his answer. He said this. I believe I came from God and you believe you came from a monkey. And you've convinced me that you're correct. <laughs> Look, he's one of the... He, if, you, if you go to the, the internet and you just, you just Google in great milestones in science. Do you know he's on it? And one of the greatest scientists ever, one of the greatest neurosurgeons, if not the greatest neurosurgeon ever to live on Earth, he's on it. So what's his idea of God, right? If, so who knows more about science or God than him, right? There's no comparison between him, Sam Harris, or the other jerks. Sorry, did I say jerks? Jerks, the other three horsemen of the apocalypse. He says this, over, gradually over the years by regularly reading, Studying and depending on the advice in God's word, I've gained a more accurate picture of God. As a doctor and a scientist, the more I learn about creation, especially the human brain, the more impressed I am with how incredibly smart our creator must be. I look through my operating microscope and marvel at the intricate complexities of creation inside a baby's brain. You know, he was the first guy to remove a tumor from a baby's brain inside his, the mother's womb. Oh. <laughs> Nobody on earth could do that besides him, right? Or I, or I stand under the stars in a summer night looking up at a universe made with such precision that you can set clocks by it. I see evidence everywhere of a brilliant and logical God who is unbelievably loving. What else could possibly explain why the all-powerful creator of the universe humbled himself and came to earth to be spat upon, cursed, even beaten with a whip before he was crucified and died on a cross for the very same people who did that to him? A God that loving, instead of being quick to judge and anxious to condemn us for, for every little sin, is really an almost unimaginably forgiving God, right? The greatest neuroscience scientist surgeon to walk the earth. That's what he thinks about God. So I want you to understand when you go to, when you young kids especially go to college and they tell you science, evolution is a proven fact and all these things and there's no such thing as God and science has proven that God doesn't exist. Laugh at them. Don't laugh at them in class. They'll give you an F. But you should understand the real understanding of life is from these great scientists of the, of the world, right? I saw this when I was looking at this up, I found this sign and I thought I'd respond to it because this is like, you couldn't be more ignorant than this. Here's what he says. For the last 4,000 years, religion has promised you a second life, while in just the last 100 years, science has doubled your life. Religion makes promises, science delivers. Nobody could be more ignorant than that. Do you know why? Because 99% of all the medical science we have today comes from Christian scientists, right? I mean, I can just show you, I'll show you, I'll show you a little history here. Uh, what do you get from atheist science? Great inventions like lobotomies, eugenic abortions, forced sterilization, cyclone B nerve gas to kill people, slave labor death camps, the gulag, psychological torture, in the gulag. those are all atheist scientists did that, right? Feeling upset today? Maybe you need a lobotomy. They invented it. It's not illegal, but they atheists invented scientists. How about this? Jesus' attitude to the sick of, was, is a particular instance of health professionals. Whatever, whatever, we are, whatever, our, whatever we are to understand by his healing miracles, it is clear from our sources of the gospel that healing the sick was a central part of his work. 
and it became a central aspect of Christianity. For example, do you guys know real history of medicine? Where is the first hospitals built by, are built by Christian? 8369, St. Basil of Caesarea founded a 300 bed hospital to take care of the poor and the sick and the ill. Church built countless separacy isolations, uh, uh, isolation hospitals all throughout Europe, hundreds of hospitals. For example, here in San Diego, what was the name of the first hospital in San Diego? Anybody know? It's called Catholic Mercy Hospital down in uh, Hillcrest. I was born there. Who was the first people to build a hospital in San Diego? Catholics. Everywhere you go, it's always Catholics and Jews who are building all the hospitals, right? Uh, Louis Pasteur, by the way, the whole idea of, of germ theory comes from Louis Pasteur, who's a faithful Catholic. Uh, Joseph Lister, if you believe in antiseptic surgery, who invented it? Joseph Lister, who was a Quaker. Uh, D uh, Davy and Faraday, who discovered and pioneered the use of anesthesia and surgery, were well known for their Christian faith. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Everything we know about science, especially medical science, comes from the Christian cultural sphere. There was a strong Christian element in the motivation of the pioneers of medical education for women, for example. How about women? Elizabeth Blackwell, the first woman doctor, was a Quaker. Right? First woman doctor in the United States was a Quaker. While Elizabeth Garrett came from a very devout family. Anne Clark, another Quaker, was the first woman surgeon and worked at the Women's Hospital at the Children's Hospital in Birmingham, which was founded by, by Christians. Florence Nightingale pioneered nursing. The Red Cross organization pioneered medicine for poor people around the world. The Salvation Army is taking care of poor people, sick people, everywhere in the, in the whole world, right? All Christians, right? So I, would, I could go on for pages and pages of all the inventions by Christians, the invention of insulin and every other kind of things we appreciate in medicine. So you see how, how dumb this is. Medical science comes from Christianity. Not, there's no atheist medicines, right? When you think about the atheist countries, Russia, East Germany, Cuba, what medicines do you get from Cuba? Go ahead, name three. There's nothing. Nothing comes from Russia. Nothing comes from the communist, atheistic, materialistic society as far as medicine goes. Nothing. When the Berlin Wall fell down, they'd be able to go to the medical system in Russia. You know what they discovered? They didn't even have aspirin. They didn't have antiseptic surgery because they couldn't afford the, the equipment. Isn't that amazing? So, so when you see things like this, it's just goofiness. You've got to think, how dumb can you be to write something like this? How ignorant of the facts of medicine in the West can you be? Now, you can go, there's, here's a site you can go to, and I'll put this when I email this out, Christian Contributions to Medicine. There's pages and pages and pages. I didn't want to do all of them because I'm already running out of time. <coughs> We can be confident that the theories of atheism and materialism are false. How come? Because it doesn't work. They are written in the late 19th century, 1800s. Darwin, Galton, Marx, Lenin, Margaret Sanger, and hundreds of materialists, secular humanists, communists, Nazis, etc. Who started the whole master race, superior white race idea? Was Adolf Hitler and his guys, right? Now in the 20th century, we realize intelligence, social sex is all about culture, not race. And let me give you some other example. Asian. It used to be thought by the British people and French and that Asian people, Chinese people, were ignorant and British colonials are the master race, right? They used to think that. What happened? Europeans considered uh, Asians to be uh, an inferior race. And by the way, in the book The Bell Curve, what he's talking about, about Charles Murray, wrote the book The Bell Curve, he says Asians are just, just a fact. They're not very intelligent. Okay. Let's examine their phrase. Let's examine history. Admiral Perry played a leading role in the opening of Japan to the West with the Convention of Kanagawa in 1854 and is often associated with the open door policy, right? Americans wanted to, Japan to open their doors and sell them silk. As he arrived in Japan, Admiral Perry ordered his ships to steam past Japanese lines toward the capital of Edo and turn their guns towards the town of Uraga. This, wa this wasn't war, it was a demonstration of American firepower. And I'll show you how this all works. Perry refused Japanese demands to leave. He then demanded permission to present a letter from President Miller Fillmore and threatened to use force of the Japanese boats around the American squadron did not disperse. Okay, here's the ship he was in. It was called the USS Mississippi, a steam powered, and these had these amazing cannons they developed, right? USS Mississippi steam powered was shot. This is a famous, powerful, look at the size and power of this gun, right? Amazing contraption of death, right? 
That, that, so Perry said, look, there's nothing you can do to me, Japanese people. You're going to do business with me, or I'm going to kill you. Sorry, that's what he said. Uh, this was a Japanese technology. This was a Japanese coastal wooden cannon built at Shogunate's order for Commodore Perry's rivals. They were plenty for Perry to come. This is what they thought they would defend himself with. This is what the Americans had. See a difference? The technology of the Americans was so far superior to Japanese technology, Japanese people had to surrender. So all, e all Europeans, and including white Americans, thought that Japanese have just these dumb cannons. We are far superior to them intellectually, right? Wrong. It's not true. Uh, in the 20th century, we realized it's about culture, not race. So what happened to, to Japan? Asians are not inferior intellectually. We understand Japanese people are as smart as any white group of people, right? In fact, smarter than most European countries, and better. Uh, by 1905, so 50 years after meeting with Admiral Perry, 50 years later, the Japanese defeated the Russian Navy in the Pacific. Completely threw them away, and now suddenly, it, English people realize, whoa, we have to deal with Japan now. They're equal to us, in fact, superior to us in many ways, right? Japan has risen in the last 100 years to clearly be the equivalent of any European country, in fact, superior to most European countries. There's not a single European country, including Germany, that can compete with Japan in industrial might, in robots, in intellectual property. There's not a single European country that can compete with Japan, right? It's true. How about, other, how about Chinese people? So then, so then Charles Murray explained, oh, well, yeah, white people are superior in intelligence to to Jap Japanese, but Chinese are still inferior. Sorry, I read his book, and I thought, what an evil, rotten book he is, directly from the buttocks of Satan. <laughs> Anyhow, how about Taiwan? These are Chinese people, right? The US goods and services trade deficit with Taiwan is $9.2 billion. There's only 20 million Taiwanese, yet they have a $9.2 billion trade deficit with us. Who's smarter? I think it's the Taiwanese. That's what Trump says all the time, right? They're, they're smarter than us. They, they're tricking us all the time, right? There's only 20 million ex excess trade. And what do they, when do they send the United States? Chopsticks? No. They send electronics, flat panels, ships, petrochemicals, machinery, metals, textiles. Who's smarter, right? I mean, look, this, these are just what the difference is, not genetic. The difference is the culture of Taiwan and the culture of Japan. Uh, soon, eventually, we'll discover that all the other Asians are just as intelligent as the Taiwanese and the Japanese, and is, in fact, happening today, right? We all recognize that. There's no corner on intellect once those other nations grasp <coughs> Western technology. They're just as smart and capable as we are. India and China are rising, not just in the economy, but as you to USA, and inherit Western civilization. Here's the difference in culture. Once they inherit Western civilization, Indians from India are the wealthiest immigrant minority in the USA. When Indians come here, suddenly they become super geniuses and become the wealthiest minority in the United States. Is there something about the food or the water? No, it's the culture. It's the culture. And then I'll show you where the culture comes from in a minute. Indian scientists are now beginning to compete for Nobel Prizes, right? Some of the re most recent Nobel Prizes are going to Indian scientists. Uh, so, however, no Nobel Prizes for North Korea. Why? It's not genetic. It's because the North Korean ideals of materialism, atheism, and communism hold their scientists down from inventing new things. Venez there's no Nobel scientists, uh, prizes for Venezuela or Cuba or nearly any Marxist atheist country. They just don't supply any. Isn't that amazing? How do we know the theories of materialism, secular humanism, atheism, materialism, secular humanism are false? Because they all war against Jews and Christians. Because all of them, including Sam Harris, wants to erase Christianity. However, the greatest benefits of mankind have come from the Judeo-Christian culture of the West. Right? Nobel Prizes. The Nobel Prize and Annual International Prize Award for 91 for achievements in physics, chemistry, physiology, or medicine, literature, and peace. Nobel Prize have been awarded to 850 individuals, of whom at least 22% are Jews. Yet the atheist materialists hate the Jews, right, and want to eradicate them, right? Although Jews comprise less than 2% of the population of the world, they get 24% of Nobel Prizes. You'd have to be, what? You, what, what, what are you, self-destructive? You should encourage the Jews to be in, work in science and live in your country, right? 
They're getting all the Nobel Prizes, inventing cures for tuberculosis and all kinds of other diseases, right? How about Christians? According to 100 years of Nobel Prize, review the Nobel Prize award between 1921 and 2000, 65.4% of Nobel Prize laureates have identified Christianity as various forms of religious preference. So you had the Jews and the Christians together, you get 90% of all the Nobel Prizes. 90%. You'd have to be a moron to go to war against Christians and Jews, right? Because they're the ones supplying you with all the medicines, all the electronics, all the inventions, all the, all the everything, right? It's, how, can you re how can you not understand that? Nevertheless, Sam Harris wants to get rid of Christianity. Does that make sense? It shouldn't make sense to you. How do we know the theories of materialism, secular humanism, atheism, all these things are false? Because they all were against Jews and Christians. In fact, a country where their leadership has adopted the ideas of materialism and atheism have offered nothing to the better mankind and reversed the progress in those countries that have come under the tyranny of atheistic materialism. In fact, all these countries introduced starvation into their countries. Uh, for example, uh, Venezuela was a rich country 20 years ago. One of the richest, wealthiest countries in South America, right? Now they're bordering on starvation and there's food riots in the streets. Why? What's the difference? Did they suddenly become stupider? Did their genetic uh, success suddenly fail? No. They're still exactly the same intelligent people who made Venezuela a wealthy country. The difference is the culture of materialism and atheism brought to them by Hugo Chavez. That's the only difference, right? That's the only difference. Here's Sam Harris. Hates Christianity, right? He is described by the four horsemen of the new atheism, which all these guys, they hate Christianity. But if Christianity has been the source of the culture of invention and science and medicine and hospitals, then what's he against? Scientific progress? I want you to understand that this is what's going on. They're trying to trick you. Jesus always said, Beware of wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. He comes to you nice, right? He sounds nice. I'm intelligent. I'm all about science. I just want the betterment of humanity. If we could just erase all the Christians and Jews, we would be much better off. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He comes to you like he's a scientist, but actually he's a killer who wants to destroy you and destroy your children. Remember he said, if I could wave a magic wand and get rid of either rape or religion, I would not hesitate to get rid of religion. To him, it's better that, that women are raped. What kind of insane maniac is that? Yet he's considered center-left. He's not even considered a radical, crazy leftist. He's considered center-left. So I want you guys to open your eyes and ears and understand what we're doing here, right? And what, what Christianity has done for the world. Why did the West have steam-powered ships with far superior can technology in Asia? It wasn't because they have superior genetic makeup, right? After all, cannons and gunpowder were invented in China. And today, if anything, Japanese manufacturing technology may be the best in the world. By the way, Seiko watches are better and cheaper than Swiss watches. Their car, Toyota is the biggest car manufacturer in the world. Better than anything Germans produce or Americans produce, right? I think so. I got 500,000 miles on my truck. <laughs> God bless those Japanese. Okay, here's where did the American culture come from that blessed the world with invention, with science, with all these things. If you read the Divine Principle book, in the last chapter on the preparation for the coming Messiah, he explains, right? The preparation period for the second advent of the Messiah is a 400-year period from the religious reformation. What changed the world was a religious reformation that began in 1517. Uh, if you study the history of science, uh, Galileo uh, was a Catholic, uh, uh, Tycho Brahe, how did they figure out that the earth was heliocentric, that the solar system is heliocentric? It was Tycho Brahe, uh, Kepler, and Galileo. All Christians, Tycho Brahe said, look, I'm understanding, I'm doing the math to explain the heliocentric universe because I believe in God's laws. Their information went directly, uh, they wrote a couple books that went directly to who? Isaac Newton. Uh, who was a strong Christian. Actually, he was a minister in his church and loved God and said, I'm going to write all the laws of gravity, all these things down, because these are the laws of God. I believe in the intelligence of God. That's why. And so on and so forth. Uh, Isaac Newton's ideas, his princip principe naturalis, goes to who? You know, Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon is a, a religious, very strong Christian 
who writes what we now call the scientific method. That is uh, theory, hypothesis, experiment, uh, publication, and then replication. Who wrote that? Francis Bacon, who absolutely believed in the Bible, believed this is how God works, right? So if everything you understand about science comes from the Christian culture. That's what made America to have great cannons or ships or steam power or any of those things. It all comes from the Christian cultural sphere, right? The intellectual, economic, and social progress of the Christian West is not due to some genetic evolution. After all, until the Reformation, until the Reformation, uh, Europe was just as backwards as any place in any country in the world. White people were not smarter than Chinese. In fact, Chinese had a better government than the Europeans did. M M Europeans, in fact, went medieval during the Middle Ages, right? They, they, Rome was here and Europe was here. They actually went down from Roman standards, right? So it couldn't be genetic. What was it? We say it was a religious reformation and the blessing of God upon Protestant Christianity, right? <clears throat> and you can if you really want to understand it, you can pick up this book. It's called The Victory of Reason. Where do we get the ideas of scientific reasoning? It's historical, right? How did Christianity lead to freedom, capitalism, and Western success? By Professor Rodney Stark. Pick up the book, read it, and then you'll understand all these things, and you won't be tricked by half-wit atheists. The intellectual, economic, and social progress of the Christian West is due to the faith of Christianity and rebirth of Europe through the Holy Spirit throughout Europe. That is why science, technology, industry sprang up in the Western Christian societies, not elsewhere, not because of their genes, it's because of their religion. It's because of the type of religion, by the way. And if we can teach this type of religion to the whole world, then the whole world will prosper and live in peace. That's why we were the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification. So why should we celebrate God's Day next week instead of Godless Day? Because all the blessings of science and technology you enjoy do not come from atheists or materialist sources. Godless materialism will enslave you, murder you, treat you as a second class citizen and enemy of the state. Jesus warns us, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Be careful of atheists, secular humanists, eugenicists, Darwinists, evolutionists, because they're really out to get you. Last couple of slides. This is from uh, Reverend Samuel Moon speaks on God's Hope for America. He came to America. America saved him from North Korean communists. Here's what he says. He says, there's only one nation like this in all of hu human history. The United States of America. It is apparent that this unique nation of America is a creation of God. The people of America have come from every corner of the world. To be an American does not depend on what race you are, what belief you have, or what cultural background you are from. It is only in this nation that no matter where you are from, you can say, this is my country, this is America. America is a microcosm of the world, transcending nationality and race. America has created a model for the ideal world. God himself has purposely hidden this land of America from civilization until his time was full. And then upon her, God raised up this model nation. In his providence, God anointed America with oil. He poured out abundant blessing upon this land. In a short 200 years, God raised this nation to the mightiest nation on earth. But blessing never comes alone. It comes with responsibility. If one forsakes the responsibility, one also forsakes God's blessing. Inevitably, the blessing of God will leave, and the nation doing this will decline. Is it not true that the signs of such decline are already apparent in America today? Beloved American people, the time has come for us to repent. We must fear the wrath of God. In the truest sense, who are true Americans? True Americans are those who have a universal mind. True Americans are those who believe in the one family of man, transcendent of color and nationality, as willed by God. Right? That's us. True Americans are those who are proud of such international families, churches, and of the nation which consists of all peoples. In the sight of God, there's no black, there's no white, there's no yellow. That's our belief, right? Opposite of the belief of Sam Harris, the atheist, the materialist, and evolutionists. They believe you're all different and you're all no good, by the way. We must look at the human race as God sees it. America must return to the true founding spirit of the nation, to the ideals which her ancestors sought to establish with sweat and blood. America must return to Godism, an absolutely God-centered ideology. God is the motivation, the cause, and foundation of the independence of America. America was born through the providence of God. If we are centered upon God, we will remain united and enjoy prosperity. 
However, as soon as we turn away from God, we'll be divided. And that's what those guys want, to destroy America. Ladies and gentlemen, if America wants to keep this blessing of God as a leading nation of the world, it must form a partnership with God. Do you have God in your homes? Do you truly have God in your church? Do you have God in your society and nation? God is a cement. With God, America will stay together like concrete. But if God leaves, she'll be like sand. When the flood comes, all will be washed away. Amazing, right? America's greatness and pride stem from God. With God, America deserves the blessing and can remain as the mightiest nation. With God, you can preserve your dignity and the leadership of the world. If you allow God to leave America, however, this nation will decline. It will be subjugated by satanic hands. When this happens, the future of America will be dismal, tragic. America will become a living hell. And that is why we celebrate God's Day next week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to me. I hope it was made sense.